We're asked to find the antiderivative of the given function. The antiderivative is the family of functions whose derivative is equal to f of x. And we can express the antiderivative more formally using an indefinite integral. The antiderivative is equal to the indefinite integral of negative two sine x minus six divided by the quantity nine plus x squared with respect to x. And now we will refer to the antiderivative or integral formulas shown here on the right. The antiderivative of negative two sine x with respect to x is equal to negative two times negative cosine x. We include the plus c at the very end. And then we have minus the antiderivative of six divided by the quantity nine plus x squared. This one's a little more challenging. Looking at the integral formulas, notice how the form resembles the antiderivative formula shown here, where the numerator is equal to one. And notice the denominator is in the form of a squared plus x squared. It might be helpful to rewrite six divided by the quantity nine plus x squared as six times one divided by nine is equal to the square of three plus x squared. So notice in this form, we can see that a is equal to three. And therefore the antiderivative of six divided by the quantity nine plus x squared is equal to six times one divided by a, which is one divided by three or one third, arctan of x divided by a, which in our case is x divided by three. And then we have plus c, the constant of integration. Let's go ahead and simplify. We have two cosine x, and then six times one third is two, giving us minus two arctangent of x divided by three plus c. And we often identify the antiderivative using capital letters. So in this case, because we are given little f of x, we can say the antiderivative big F of x is equal to again, two cosine x minus two arctan of x divided by three plus c. Of course, we could also use inverse tangent here instead of arctangent. And the nice thing about determining antiderivatives is that we can always check our work, meaning the derivative of big F of x must equal the given function little f of x. So you may want to pause the video and check this. I hope you found this helpful.